Hello, how are y'all doing today? My name is Bernie Thompson and today we're here to look at a 2013 Ford Focus with a dual clutch transmission. This dual clutch transmission in this vehicle was put in so it's got a transmission, a new controller, and a clutch assembly. And now the shop is trying to get the transmission learned into the vehicle. These are dry clutch systems, so that means that there's no fluid base to apply the clutches. These are all done with an electric motor, and the electric motor drives and turns, and it will turn a wedge into a fork, a shift fork, and these clutches are normally disengaged. To engage these clutches, a wedge is forced in, and it pushes the throttle bearing in, and that engages the clutch. There's two separate clutch discs with two input shafts. One input shaft comes in and another one goes inside the hollow tube and they have different gears on the back of them. Depending on which clutch is engaged or disengaged tells me what power path I'm going to take through the transmission. The shifts are done on this transmission through electronics as well. I have two electric motors and they spin a little gear that spins a big gear. These big gears turn and when they turn there is a a groove cut around this drum and they go in and out and as they go up or down the shift forks are forced in and out of gears. There's four shift forks on these vehicles and in order to put a tranny in one you have to command the module to do a learning sequence. Then it turns these gears and it figures out which gear it is and then it checks the clutch and it sets the clutch friction points up and these are calibration points that are going to be learned. So basically is what that does for you is it makes the controller understand what this new tranny is going to do. The shop can't get it through its learning so the transmission is stuck and we can't drive it and it won't do anything because it can't be calibrated. So the first thing we want to do is I want to put a scan tool in and I just want to read the codes. So let's go ahead and take care of that. I've connected my factory OE scan tool, the Ford IDS, up to this vehicle. I pulled the codes and basically we have a P073E, unable to engage reverse. Now basically, is what this is telling me is when we went into our calibration and tried to calibrate this, this transmission, it doesn't want to calibrate because it can't obtain this gear. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and do some tests. Now those of you that are familiar with these dual clutch Ford trannies know that once you've got it in and it's in calibration mode, there's not a lot of data you can get. During calibration, you really can't see anything, it's all blind. It just says it's running these tests and then it fails and it tells you a code that it failed for. If you look at a lot of the PIDs, the PIDs say that it's still, it's unlearned or it's waiting to learn. And a lot of times this takes a while for me to get through the scan tool and it still doesn't really help me diagnose the car. What I want to show you is a few tricks I've learned on how to diagnose this really quickly. So we want to take an oscilloscope and connect it up to the transmission and to a fuse for the transmission. Let's go do that and take a look at that data. We've got our oscilloscope and we're going to connect the ATS Elite 4 up to this Ford Focus so we can figure it out. The first thing that we want to do is I want to go ahead and I want to get into the fuse box and I've already looked at a wiring diagram and this fuse right here is the fuse that we're interested in. This is a 25 amp fuse that powers the tranny. I've made jumper lines to where I've got blades on one end and the the opposite to it on the other. We're going to slip the blades into this unit and now we're going to put these down in here and as what this is going to enable me to do is to read the current through this fuse. If I can read the current I can see what power is being pulled by the transmission. We're going to take our amp clamp and zero it. We're going to get around it. So now we're able to read the current flow that goes to the TCM 
and the TCM is moving motors on this transmission. There's two three-phase motors that disengage and engage the two clutch discs. There's two motors that drive the, the shift forks up and down by rotating a gear with like a groove and the groove has cutouts in it that force the fork up or pull it back down. Now that's what we sort of want to do. We want to just see what's going on with this tranny and why we can't calibrate it. Remember the DTC says it just can't get in reverse. I want to check that. So the way I'm going to do this is I want to go ahead and I want to get into the two input shafts and I want to read the input shaft signal and the amperage to the controls the tranny together so I can try to see what might be happening. Let's go ahead and get in the input shafts. So we're in one of the input sensors here with the back probe. Let's go ahead and get the other one. Okay, we've back probed the other input shaft speed sensor up here. Now let's go look at our signals. Now we've got the oscilloscope connected to the imp two input speed sensors and we've got the amps that power the whole transmission. Now we need to set the scope up. So what we want to do first is we want to go to meter. We have our three channels connected, so that's good. We want to come over here and we want to set up the 20 amps and then we want to zero those. So we're going to zero the 20 amp and the other is just going to read the voltage. So now is what we want to do is we're going to watch these two input shafts speed sensors and then we're going to watch the current that goes to the transmission as well. The other thing you're going to do is if the car can be driven, I'm going to also have one channel connected to the output speed sensor. That would be on the ring gear and it picks up off of the ring gear on this transmission. But for this I just want to get here. But be aware that if we got a car and I'm going to go drive it, I'm going to do the same technique and I want to watch the gears take their shifts, but I'm also going to be watching the output speed sensor. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to start this up in deep record and I have 20 seconds. So 20 seconds of time is quite a bit of time so that will get me enough data to where I can see what's happening with this vehicle. What we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go start the vehicle up and watch what happens. So let's do that. Now that we've started this Ford up, let's take a look at the scope. What I want to show you guys is this yellow trace. The yellow trace is the current that's going to the vehicle. Now let's stop this data collection. Now do you see how we're operating the yellow or we're pulling high current, 35 amps, and then we gave up. It stopped trying here. So it's working and then it stopped and it's not going to do anything more because it knows it can't fix the problem. So let's look at what the problem is. Now normally on these clutches, I see them pull on 13 to 18 amps is pretty normal. And they just hit really quick and then they stop. Now if it continues to try to move, you get more and more current. That's why you've got the 35 amps down here. So we want to take our zoom window. And what I want to do is I want to come in when I started the car. Now right here, we started the car, it moved the clutch and some of the shifting just trying to see what's happening. Now it tried again and then it's what it's going to do is it's going to pull on for a long time and let off again. Now what we want to do is we want to come over here where we started it. I want to take the zoom window and I want to zoom right in here. Do you see the red trace? Do you see the red trace? So this red trace, do you see how that's an input shaft? Well the input shaft is turning. Now guys, when you're in park, those should not be turning. So neither of these should be turning. They should be stationary. This is turning, now watch, if I turn off that, do you see how the other input shaft is not in rotation? 
but this input shaft is in rotation. Now as we come across, the computer realized that that input shaft is turning and it tries to apply the clutch and it's trying to get, the, get it to release. But it can't release because there's something wrong with the clutch and the clutch is dragging the disc around and that disc, when it turns, it's turning one of the input shafts. So what the code for this is, is sort of confusing because it says I can't re obtain reverse gear. This doesn't have to do with reverse gear, guys. This is the clutch. If you follow the diagnosis, we would be looking at something that would be wrong with the transmission or the module where this is actually a clutch problem. It's pretty crazy that when they know that this input shaft speed sensor is in rotation, that they did not give us a code for that. In these trannies, they're just really different and they're really hard to diagnose because the way that Ford presents the data. So this is some tricks that I've come up with that help me and I'm really hoping that this can help you. The shop's been working on the car for a while, you know, because it's confusing, it's in the reverse, it's in the transmission. No guys, it's in the clutch. The clutch is the problem. By being able to utilize a scope on this, it makes it a five minute diagnostics. So what needs to happen is the tranny's going to have to come back out again now, but we're going to focus on fixing the clutch because that's what's wrong with the car. We have a clutch problem and it's dragging the disc. I sure hope this helps you diagnose cars in your bay.